Well, my friends, it's been several hours. This has been sitting in the mold and everything looks pretty good to me. In fact, I think I'm gonna to try to take it apart. I'm, the only thing I'm a little bit leery about is this section right here because I don't have anything in there at the moment holding that. Maybe I should just make something real quick and put it in there and get it glued in before I take this out of the mold. It might be smarter on my part to do that. I don't think that's going to create a problem and I think it'll hold there anyway because I did glue, put glue on that. I think it's probably glued. I hope it's not glued to the mold. <laughs> that's what I'm worried about actually. Nope, it's not. I think it'll be okay. I'm going to go ahead and take it out. Pretty dang good. I'm pretty happy with that. Just kind of line it up here and see how it looks. It's gonna be kind of a cool looking mandolin. It's a little hard to line up because it does it all springs out of shape. Well, I gotta have to get busy here and get this thing done. <laughs> it's starting to look pretty cool. I like this little extra point. I just think that looks classy. It's much smaller than most of them that have the extra point, by the way. That Mine's much tinier. I tried to keep mine where it, it wouldn't uh, have a problem fitting in a regular case. So we'll see how that all works out. I've been fitting uh, a little piece for this. I'm gonna go ahead and get it glued in, put the clamps back on here. help hold it. I may have to put a wedge or two in there even to make that a little bit better. Put that little tiny wedge in there. I think that actually does help it a little bit. And I'll try putting one in from this side too. And we'll let it sit for another hour or, well, for a while. I, it probably won't take an hour and uh, just long enough to get that kind of set up. While that's setting up, I'm going to be uh, making sure I've got enough kerf and uh, if I have to, I'll make some more kerf lining for this. I made some kerf by just cutting down guitar kerf that I had previously made. I cut it down smaller so that it would fit into a mandolin real well. But before I glue that in, I'm going to work on this. Uh, there's a transition here where this overlaps, and I'm going to smooth all that out. You heard a song about a horse or two. Well, here's one more, and I swear it's true. The finest horse you've ever seen. His name was Phantom 614. A proud young stallion with head held high. His cold light satin under candlelight. His mane and tail, oh, how they sheen. His name was Phantom 614. I put the brace back in the inside to expand it out. So that way, when I glue in the kerf, it's at its maximum size. Anyway, we'll start on the kerf on this side. And I've got some shorter pieces here. This piece might possibly fit it. Nope. Needs a little longer piece than that. This one might fit it without it cutting or anything. Yep, it looks like it will. It looks like, wow, isn't that something? It fits it exactly almost. I mean, like, so close it's ridiculous. And I'm gonna glue in the kerf a little bit proud, especially of the blocks. And that way we can sand it all down through my thickness sander and get it right. And I'm talking about the commercial bigger thickness sander at this point. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and just use the Type Bond 3 on this too. Again, because this is something you don't ever really want to come loose. Get a real good coating of this on here. And once again, using that high dollar glue spreader. This is uh, the best glue spreader ever invented by a human. Well, actually, I don't think it was a human that invented it, but you know what I mean. All right, I'll go get my clothes pins and we'll get this pinned up. Well, there's one side all clamped up, as you can see. And some of you might say that's overkill. 
and I would say there's no such thing and I would even add too much is not enough. Let's see if we can get this other side on here. It's uh, going to be tighter because this curve is pretty tight. I'm going to wet this down a little bit just to make it bend a little better around this curve. I used the spray bottle to wet this end down. Now I'm putting the glue over it. I hope that makes it flexible enough to not break, but you know, this stuff is meant to be put in this way, so if it breaks, it's not a big deal. You just butt it up and keep going. I'm gonna sand off a little bit of this to get up in that corner better. That was easy, I just did it on the disc sander. Held it there by hand. It looks like it's going pretty well. I'd be lying if I said it didn't break, but it doesn't really matter. It did break in one little spot there, but not a big deal. said son he can't be rode but stay away boy or you'll be thrown he said that horse is just plain mean his name was phantom 614 there you go glued up on that side I think I'll go put it in the vise and and then glue up the other side of course I'll have to take this center thing out um, and I don't think that'll be a problem if I take it out and I see that it's starting to change shape or something I'll have to put that back in but right now I think that's going to be fine to take that out but we'll see Oh, that's what the other side looks like. We'll go put it in the vise and see if we can't put the uh, kerf on that side at the same time. Well, there's what she looks like all glued up on both sides. So, anyway, we'll let that set probably at least uh, a couple hours. It's three o'clock, but uh, maybe around five I'll take those you know clips off there and start leveling this off. I want to get this thing glued together as quick as I can. Next I'm going to turn my attention to gluing up the neck and I've got these two pieces and as you remember I cut the one piece by accident but you really can't even see it. Plus the neck will only be out of the top part of this anyway. It's only right down at the very heel and right at the peg head which part of that's covered by veneer so almost no visible evidence could be seen of that. Cut the ends off so I could see which way the grain is going. Now granted they came out of the tree um, yeah, I'm not sure exactly growing kind of like this one of these two ways probably this way this is probably how they came out of the tree right here but I don't want to glue it together that way because that makes the grain all go one direction. I want to oppose the grain. So if I turn it around and put them like this, then they're, they're going um, kind of in. Let me double check that and see if that's the way. Yeah, that's probably the very best I can get out of it. So, I, you know, this way the grain is opposing each other. Yeah, they're both growing in this way. That way it's stronger. The, the look of the neck itself won't really matter. There's going to be a divider with some decorative pieces down the middle. So, that part, the grain doesn't have to match. In fact, I don't really want it to. It's, as long as it looks pretty, and it will, I think we're in good shape. So, that's the orientation. I'm going to glue them together. I'm going to mark that so I don't forget if I put a couple of marks like that on there then that's the only way they'll line up. You can't you can't line it up any other way. I'm going to go get the 
work on getting some decorative pieces to put in here now. So basically that's what I'm going to do is make it a seven piece neck. Now that's a little more than I typically do. It's not the first time I've done it, but I, I have made other seven piece necks before. For the world's finest, you got to go all out. So that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to thin these way down, uh, thinner than probably I've ever done before to make it a little different. Plus, I think that'll just make it look better too. So we're going to make these really thin. I don't know, maybe 30 thousandths a piece or something like that. That way the whole thing of five of them would what, be 150 thousandths, which is pretty small. Uh, probably won't go quite to 30, but I'll go really small, probably uh, 40 then, and that way they'll be 200,000, so it'll be less than a quarter inch thick all the way through. Wow, look how thin that is. Five layers of awesomeness. They came out to 50, 51 thousandths a piece. And I thought, you know, you better know when to stop and uh, because you could break them uh, when you're pushing them through there. So together, they're 255 thousandths. <laughs> so exactly 51 thousandths a piece. So there you go. That's like perfect and then some. Now I'm going to cut these down to the same physical size so that they're easier to glue up in the vacuum press and we're going to be using the vacuum pressing system to glue this up because that's the best way to do it. Well my friends it's time for the glue up and uh, this is really one of the harder glue ups uh, to do because you know you got so many thin pieces these thin pieces like when you get glue on them they like to curl and everything too so it's really trickier than you think and you got to work fast and you got to get it in the vacuum pressing system there too and while I'm thinking of that I have everything set up but I didn't actually connect this up in the box there so I might as well do that I've got the cord connected to the box now so everything's ready to go might as well start spreading the glue so we got 14 pieces of I mean we got seven pieces of wood and 12 sides to glue up because we're not gluing up the two outer sides. So, here we go. Okay, so we're gonna spread all this glue and we're gonna do it just as quick as we can. This roller is the fastest way I've found to spread the glue on this stuff. You can brush it, uh, you know, you can do lots of things, but this roller really works fast and it gets it covered really quickly. So, to me, that's the best way to go about it. And you just flop one over on top of the other and you do it again and I think we'll be able to do it very quickly this way. I like to get the glue on both surfaces because that way I know everything's going to get full contact. You can already see the uh, little pieces getting thin and they start to curl up. That's just the way it works with this stuff. So you just got to work fast and get it clamped as quick as you can. Well, that horse and I, our souls were one. Without any fear, I climbed upon the back of the one they said was me. His name was Phantom 614. And again, without the vacuum pressing systems, you'd be trying to clamp this all up with about a thousand C clamps. And it all slides on you. It just, it's really a pain in the neck. Uh, so this is much better. I can't even tell you how much better. Exponentially better. Yeah, it's an expensive tool to get the vacuum pressing systems. And just to be perfectly clear, they gave it to me because I asked them to give it to me to promote it on my videos. Now, granted, I already pretty much knew it was going to be the cat's meow before I got it. So... They didn't have to sell me on it, and they didn't tell me what to say. If you know me, I don't say things just because, you know. I say things that I know are fact. Um, and I'm telling you right now, this thing works great. It's, it's, I don't know what I did before I got it. I seriously don't. It's, it's the most helpful glue-up tool I have. 
I went, might add this roller is very awesome too. Until I started using this roller, this took a lot longer. So the roller idea, and I think one of my viewers suggested the roller, and uh, I have to admit that that is a great idea also. It really works great. Just like spreading paint, this roller spreads this glue much faster than you can do it with a brush. Gets a much more even coat too. Okay, I think we're basically done. I'm gonna try to align all the parts here by laying them on this flat table, pressing them down, squeezing them together. I'm gonna get the saran wrap or the um, shrink wrap, I guess is really what it is, and we'll put that on there. Now, I don't have my able body assistant here to help me anymore, so I have to do this all by myself, and I'll figure it out. It would be better if there was somebody else here helping me, but I'm quite capable of doing just about anything if I put my mind to it. This ain't easy, I'll admit, but it's working. And we'll just tear it off there. That really worked out nice. Now I'm going to flatten it out one more time on the back side here. Try to get it just as flat and straight as I can get it. You know, it ain't going to be perfect on that, but that's okay. We got enough to work with here that we can make it work. Now let's go over to the vacuum pressing systems bag and put it in there. We're at the bag and all we really have to do is just lay this thing on there. That's really all there is to it. Just lay it on there. Now I have this uh, plenum underneath here. I don't know if you can see it, but this thing has saw cuts in it. The, the line comes up through it right here into the bag. And then I put this round board on top so that the bag itself doesn't have any sharp corners to deal with. That's pretty much all there is to it. I'm gonna slide that down just a little bit further. And now we just gotta lock up this close end of the bag here. So we'll lock up this end of the bag. And before arthritis, this was easy to do. I'm just gonna tell you the truth. It's a little hard for me to do this. You know, if you got good strong fingers, you won't have any trouble. But uh, honestly, my fingers and my hands are, you know, giving me trouble. So we just snap that in place first and just around the end here. And we've got this white plastic uh, piece inside. Then this piece snaps around the white plastic. That's really all it boils down to. And this is the hard part, is snapping this thing in. Um, just because it takes quite a bit of force to put that on there. Like I said, before arthritis, this was a piece of cake. It's still not that difficult. And I'm sure I could probably use some kind of tool to help me, a clamp or something, but who's got time for that? There we go. We're in pretty good shape there now. Okay. All right. And I'll take a second to line this back up. And it looks like it's in pretty good alignment. It's hard to keep that in perfect alignment. I got to be honest. But that's pretty good. And while it's there, I'm going to go ahead and flip this on. Now, this uh, machine has uh, auto cycling or continuous cycling. And I'm just going to put it on auto. And you can hear it starting to uh, do its suction. And you will see this bag drawing down here. It's already, I can see it's very minimal right now, but it'll happen really fast once it actually happens. It sucks it down tight as it can be. <laughs> I like to say it sucks it down as tight as a bull's butt at fly time. And my glue is slipping on me there, so I'm trying to align it one more time here at the last second. I think I got it. Once it goes, it goes, and then there's no more aligning. <laughs> Uh-oh, it slipped on me. Doggone it. It slipped. I'm going to have to open it. And the easiest way to do that is to take the thing off the back here. It slipped on me. It, it did, I have to admit. It just does. That, when you get that many surfaces together, they like to slide now. And even though I wrapped them with the uh, shrink wrap, it still likes to slide. Looks pretty good again. 
Not the only option I've got is to try it again. I think I'm going to do it again. I can tell you for sure is, you know, even as difficult as this is to line up, it's 10 times harder with C clamps. That's why this is such an easy thing compared to the C clamps. This isn't bad. It's just I want it as good as I can get it. It doesn't like to cooperate. That's the one thing I can tell you. Now the bag is not the issue. It's the it's the glue up. They just don't like to cooperate. These glue ups, when you do this many levels, layers, and you could pin it, and that would have probably been a good idea if I, you know, drilled a, a hole all the way through in a spot that doesn't matter. That would probably be a good idea, and I might do that in the future. I, I, I've thought about that before. I think I'm close enough to call that good enough. But uh, you'll hear this thing kick off here in a second when, once it draws a full vacuum. It just keeps sliding the way it wants to slide. It's really aggravating. It's not very much, but it's enough that it just aggravates me. Uh, I don't know. I think I'm just going to live with that. I think I can make that work. I think I'll be fine with that. So I'm going to let that set all night and we'll check on it in the morning. Thought I'd show you how I thickness the sides. I'm taking off 15 thousandths of an inch at a pass and I just keep all turning it over until I get it perfect. I'm not sure if I turned it yet or not so I'm going to just run it through like this. And now I go 15 thousandths of an inch, that's a quarter turn, and then I flip it and do it again. So it, it's going to take a little while to do this. I think I'm going to run it through on that same side again. A one-man horse to me through two. The people would stare as we ride through. A side which few have ever seen. His name was Fan. looks real good, real flat, smooth. That's just what you're looking for. My next thought is to get this top glued on there, but I can't do that yet because I haven't put the braces in and I haven't cut the F-holes. We're pretty dang good though. I'm pretty happy with that. I don't think it could be much better. So it's looking really wonderful. I can't wait to get her going. I put the sides back in this mold to just keep their shape a little bit better. Now. I'm going to see if we can't draw in the F holes here. Now the tricky part of this is getting this just aligned as perfect as I can. I always make the top a little bit bigger than my pattern. And that's a good thing because it always works out that way. There you go. That looks pretty dang centered to me. And then we'll just take and draw it in here with the pencil. I don't usually cut these out until I get the braces in. I'll put the braces in tomorrow because it's late today. So, there you go. Well, in order to make a peg head like this, you got to have these little wings glued on. Um, I mean, I guess there's other ways to do it, but that's the most efficient way uh, without wasting a lot of wood. Anyway, we're going to glue this on. This is just stuff I cut off. Uh, of the the neck here. Put a little bit on each side and what I'm going to do is just put this in my large woodworking vise and clamp it. I've got I made it parallel it doesn't probably doesn't look parallel but it is and so the vise will clamp it very nicely. It's probably the easiest way to do it because the the vise is big enough to clamp this whole thing from one end to the other and I can turn it upside down so that all the parts are flush. So I'll just lay it in my vise like that and clamp it shut. And that's what I'm going to do to clamp it. 
And now I need to put the internal braces in here. And I have them marked on my pattern where they go. So I'll line up my pattern, get it centered on this piece as well as I can. Then I'll just take a pencil and mark the end and the end and the end and the end. I don't really need to draw it all the way across there, although I could. When I make the braces, I can just set them there, and as long as the ends are lined up, it should work out just fine. So we'll get started making those braces. Well, I've selected very select pieces of uh, spruce for this, very tightly uh, quarter sawn. Uh, I've cut these down smaller than I believe any I've ever done in the past. Uh, this one is only four millimeters thick, and this one is only uh, three and a half millimeters thick for the treble side. This is the base side. Anyway, I'm gonna put them in on my marks. Then I take this little simple tool that I made, just have a ballpoint pin insert in there. That's what I use. Just works good for me. You could use a pencil lead of some sort if you could work that out. Then I just take this and draw right on here. Let it follow the curve of the top. And try to only do it one time if you can. And that leaves that mark there. That looks pretty good. So we'll probably go with that. Here's the treble side. Try to put it exactly in the right place there. And do that once more. Again, the fewer times you can go across there, the better. It looks like it's gonna be pretty small. You know, I don't know. We're just gonna go with that and see how it works. I may end up making these again. You just never know. I'm gonna saw these out on the bandsaw. Probably not gonna film that. I'm just gonna follow that curve right there. You know, I just showed you how I traced that and I've, it, it occurred to me that I've seen a lot of people do that with a washer, and a washer probably would even be more accurate. So, uh, you know, I just thought I'd mention that to you, and if that's easier for you than using this, uh, just a real, if you had a fine washer with a fine hole that you could trace, that would probably be the most accurate way to do it. Just thought I'd point that out. Uh, you don't have to do it just like I do it here. Um, this looks pretty good. Now the problem with this is, this puts it in the brace at an angle because this is dished, you understand. So what I need to do is carve this side off of here. I want this perpendicular to the top. At least that's what I think I want. Uh, I've always done it that way. And uh, I think that's the way I'm gonna do this one. But the problem with that is I have to carve off this outer edge. Now, by the way, when you mark these, you need to put, you know, like I put a T for treble, and I always put that to the inside edge. I put a B for base, and I put it on the inside. So I always know the orientation of these. When you start carving on them and everything, you could turn them around, and you wanna make sure they stay in the same orientation. Otherwise, you could really be working against yourself here when you're trying to make these fit perfectly. I'm going to take this little eight millimeter finger plane that one of my wonderful viewers just recently sent me, and I'm going to work down just the outer edge of this. And this little finger plane is the perfect thing for this. I, I don't know if you, you probably can't see this now, especially since I carved it, but there's one, only one grain line going down the center of this. That's how straight this is. It's, there's one grain line going right down the center. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's how accurate this little piece is. And that's, believe it or not, that's by, on purpose, I tried to find the straightest thing I could find there. Well, that straightened it up a lot. That's really very good. I'm gonna go with that for the moment. I'm gonna use some sandpaper on it here in a minute, but right now I'm gonna go with that because that's pretty darn good. And then we're gonna do the same thing to this outside edge. Now this one doesn't seem like it's gonna need quite as much. 
The more accurate you cut these out, the more accurate they're going to fit your top. So when you cut them on your bandsaw or whatever saw you're using, you want to try to really follow the line very closely. Because it'll save you a lot of time in the long run. That's pretty good, and that looks pretty tight to the top also. This one probably could use a little bit more, but I think I'm just going to do it with sandpaper. I'm just going to lay this sandpaper in here, and I think I'm just going to uh, use my method that I use for fitting uh, the bridges to the top, the bridge feet, and basically just walk, walk it back and forth right in the spot that you're in. And I'm holding it up perpendicular also. The only problem is this sandpaper is not quite long enough, so I'm going to cheat on this a little bit here and try it like this. And then what I do is I hold it up to the light and you can't see but I've got light right here and I can see. And quite honestly there's a little more light there than I want but it's only in one place. It's right in here in this one spot. That's the only place there's any light to speak of. What I can do is carve away it's not real bad, but there's light there, so I'm going to try to pick about where I think I see the light. I made two little marks. There's light in this area right here, so if I carve away from there, then it shouldn't be too bad. Try that again, see what it looks like. There's still some light there, but it's not as bad as it was. That helped quite a bit. I can still see a little light though. And I would really prefer not to see any. This is probably where that washer would have been a little more accurate. It's on something like this. I think my little block of wood can catch on things. And, oh, wow, that really did a good job there. That's pretty darn close. I won't say it's perfect yet, but it's getting close. Actually, I'm going to just extend my mark up here kind of in the center of this so I can kind of tell where I'm at because it's hard to tell. Actually, I don't think that's even going to work. Yeah, well, I can do it like this. That way I can kind of tell I'm moving right at my mark. These are going to be very dainty braces. I've learned on the mandolin you don't need a lot, number one, because of the arch top. And number two, the smaller they are, the less they interfere with the top vibration. Put it in place. See if I can see any light through there. And the honest answer is no, I don't see any light at all. It's perfect, just perfect. I mean, when it gets to be the point where it's perfect, you might as well just quit because that's about as good as you're gonna do. So that's really, really nice. It fits it perfectly. And, you know, another test for that is when you push down on it, you shouldn't feel it move in any direction. It, it really is just perfect. So, that's the first one. That's the base bar. Now we'll do the treble bar. And I think the first thing I'll do here, is just to save myself some time, is to just check for light and see where we've got light coming through. Well, this one's got quite a bit of light, unfortunately. It looks like I need to take it off from about here forward, and that would solve most of my problem. I'm going to go from about right here forward, take a very light pass there, and test it again before I go much further. Yeah, that might have helped, but it didn't fix it, and I need it right on the tip now. So let's see that now and see what that looks like. Okay, that's much better. And now I'm going to say we need it from the back here all the way back this way. It's definitely better, but it's still not really perfect yet. Take that off there. Now check it again before I cut the bait into that. I think the worst place is about right here. I think I'll run the sandpaper on it for a little bit. Um, it's still got quite a bit of light, I'll be honest, but I think I think I'm going to uh, run the sandpaper on it first. I think I can help myself that way. 
Got the right side turned the right way is what I'm trying to make sure of. Yeah, that helped a whole lot, but I've still got some problems. I've cut off a little too much on this far end. Let's see if that helps it. Wow, yeah, that really helped a lot. It's barely, barely, barely any light now. It's really hard to say, but it's not much light coming through there now. I think that's gonna just about do it. Yeah, I barely see any light. I mean like almost nothing. So now I'll put this back in here, run it between these spots again, make sure I got the brace turned the right direction, and I do. Yeah, I don't see any light at all. Zero, none. So to me, it's as good as it gets. It's difficult to make something like that that's shaped like that completely light free, but that is as tight as it's gonna get. Now we'll glue them in place, and then once those are set up, we can cut out the F-holes. I'm using Type Bond 3 again, because one, like I mentioned before, this is something I never ever want to come apart. Type Bond Original is perfectly capable but as I've mentioned, we're building the world's finest mandolin ever built by a human. Or at least that's our goal. And therefore, you gotta go one step above and beyond. And that's what we're doing here. Pretty look, even looking squeeze out across there. Pretty much going the whole length. I'll put a leather pad under here and clamp this down. These are so hard to squeeze now with my arthritis. That was not a problem ever before. I could squeeze those things so easy, but now I can't. Oh my gosh. Just gotta make sure I didn't get on the wood there. I don't wanna, cause boy, that would make a mess on the wood. And I'm good, I think. On this one here, I'm going to move it a little bit cause it's scaring me. It's not on the wood, but it could get there. That looks pretty good to me. Okay, and then what I'll do is take a couple more clamps and put them in the center. I've said bef many times before, you don't want to get in any big hurry when you're doing a clamp up thing. You want to, you really want to make sure everything's as good as you can do it. There's almost no such thing as too many clamps. It just really isn't. You, you just can't put too many clamps on things. And there's that argument about squeezing all the glue out. I'd say go for it. Try to squeeze all the glue out. That's, that's, your, that's your goal. It's not going to happen, but try for that. Now, I'm not squeezing these that tight, don't get me wrong, because this is a delicate piece of wood. It's soft, but I am, you know, making contact in all the places where I think it needs it. Well, come on here. I think this screw's getting longer as I undo it here. Again, I'm not squeezing it real tight, just firm. Just making sure it's got firm contact. All right, got the glue on that one. And again, you wanna make sure you got real good coverage on this kind of thing. And there's real, that's real good coverage. Got a little more glue on there than I'm sure I need. I'm checking my letter, it's on the inside, which is where it's supposed to be, and I'm putting it down carefully in the spot where it belongs. Next, I'll get the leather pads here. I could have swore I got enough of those out, but I don't see them right now. We'll get this first one clamped up. You know, if this fits perfectly, you can clamp it at one end and it won't raise up the other end. If that's not the case, then you're probably not fitting up, you know, tight enough. You want them fitting really, really tight. And when I mean tight, I mean this brace needs to be tight to the whole top all the way. Sometimes I say things that doesn't probably make any sense to you guys. I know in my mind what I mean. I mean I want a tight joint all the way through there. There it is. Again, I'm, you can see I'm kind of tightening it softly there. I'm not cranking it down. I just want good, firm pressure. I mean, this has got leather on it, but I'll put another little piece of leather there too, just to be sure. That's about as good as it can be done. 
We'll give that a few hours to set up, probably till Monday. Today is Friday evening or afternoon late. It's like 3.30 Friday afternoon, so it'll probably be Monday before I get back to this. We'll see. Well, I'm in the shop and it's a Saturday. It's snowing outside, so there's not a whole lot to do out there unless you just want to get in the mess. And I really don't feel like getting in that big mess. And it's snowing pretty good. My grandsons are here from Ohio and they're out there playing in the snow right now, so I'd just be in their way if I was out there. They're having fun. I thought I would just go ahead and start carving down these bars a little bit. Again, I'm using the little 8mm plane because it's so easy to push. The 10 millimeter would be perfectly fine for this. That's what I've used on all of them up to now. It's looking pretty good. The um, ends need to be cut down. I'll cut the ends down with a chisel. You have to be a little careful here because you can run off the end and hit your top. So I'm trying to be a little careful there. But I do want it to come down right to the top. I just do all this by eye. I don't have any specific measurements for any of this. That looks pretty good. Trying to thin, thin these down real nice and dainty. This is the uh, one that's been shaved, and of course this one over here has not been touched yet. It's still square, so I'll give you some idea. And that's looking pretty good. There's a lot of glue squeeze out uh, that I'm going to clean off of here too. It's not real bad, there's just a little bit. But I always like to keep it all nice and clean and neat. Probably seems very insignificant to most folks to clean off all this little tiny bit of glue and, and it probably is more than likely a dog wouldn't even be able to hear the difference but my thought is the less obstructing the top to keep it from vibrating the better so I'm getting rid of everything that's sticking out here that shouldn't be there. Like I said, it probably won't make any difference at all, but on the other hand, will it hurt anything? And I'd say no, it won't hurt anything to get rid of it. So if it won't hurt anything to get rid of it, and it's got no purpose of being there, I say get rid of it. So that brace is cleaned up. This brace still needs to be cleaned up and it needs to be carved. This is looking pretty good. The tone on this is really good, so I'm real happy with the tone. Uh, and it's getting better as the lighter I make it, and the more airy it becomes, uh, the better that tone is going to be. So we're going to clean this brace up quite a bit.
that looks real good. Now I'm just going to clean this one up. I'm not going to film me cleaning this one up as you've seen me do it on the other one. But uh, I think we're moving on in the right direction. Well, I guess it's time to cut these F holes out. So I'll start by just drilling a hole in the center. Actually, no, I don't want to do that yet. I'm getting ahead of myself. It doesn't really hurt anything that I did that, but I'm going to put the strips of gauze on here. I forgot about that. I like to do that. Um, the strips of gauze keep uh, strengthen this uh, top and uh, where that grain is uh, fine and it's also very thin around those edges, um, you know, it can crack in these places. So the gauze uh, keeps it from cracking. Anyway, I'm gonna do that. I mean, it was good enough for Lloyd Lower, so it's good enough for me. I've just got some Elmer's glue here. That seems to work pretty well for this purpose. Of course, it works better when the glue comes out. You can't have everything. We can uh, always cut this back. So I don't mind it sticking out a little further than it needs to, at least right at this point in time. Though I might cut this corner off. And maybe this corner. Yeah, it wouldn't, wouldn't hurt at all if the glue would just come out of the bottle. That would, wouldn't hurt anything. So I'm going to take the lid off there and make sure it comes out. Yeah, that's way more than I need now, but that's all right. I'll take the uh, little finger plane and trim this back, make it look nicer later, but right now, just getting it on here is all that's important. This uh, section right here can be trimmed off a little bit, so I'll cut that back. That's good on that side. That looks real good. Now we'll attempt to do the same thing on this side. Well, now it definitely comes out fast enough. It's been a full 24 hours since I glued those pieces of gauze in there and I should be able to go ahead and drill these holes out now. Okay, I guess it's time to saw some of this out. I really don't have the best setup for this. Um, it would be much better if I took some time I guess and built myself something special but I only have to saw out two of these.
other night I woke up from a dream This dream to me is over this scene And in this dream I came upon a man A man who left no footprints in the sand There you go. Like I said, it's awkward, but it works. And yeah, I'm sure I could think of a million ways to do it better. But, you know, when you only have two of them to do, you just knock them out and then you worry about it later. You know, a, a, a table jigsaw would work on something like this. I've had three table jigsaws and got rid of all three of them. I just don't use them ever and uh, they're just, they take up space in the shop. So that's why I don't have a table jigsaw. We walk a long way. For those in need, we'd often stop and pray. Our journey guided only by the night. And yet we walked as if there was a line. Then he said, walk the straight and narrow every day. Then he said, head straight toward the light and never stray. My little board here is just not working out. I'm gonna go ahead and switch that out here off camera and I'll be back in just a minute. I made a little stiffer board here. That'll make it a little easier. It's still gonna be difficult, but it's easier now with this heavier, stiffer board. Then he said, lend a helping hand along the way. Then he said, find the love of God on judgment day. In all that stupidness, I got my blade in upside down. That's another part of my problem. Okay, well with all that hassle, you'd sure think this was my first rodeo. And I wouldn't blame you for thinking that. Sometimes they go easy and other times they just don't. It says, I'm sorry to see that one be finished. My goodness. I think in 50, 50 or close to 50 mandolins, this is the hardest one of those I ever did. I don't know why it decided to be hard, but I think it's mostly just due to the pain in my hands. It's really hard to control my hands at this point. At least I can go to the file now and clean that mess up. And the file cleans it up really nicely. In case there's any doubt, you, you can probably see around here, there's a lot of pencil mark and all that has to come out. So, you know, we're, we're nowhere near in trouble. Anyway, I got a lot more of that to do. I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. Here's, here's a shot of a before. Here's the one that's in progress. You can see it looks much nicer already, at least this end of it. And I'll show you what it looks like when I get her finished. Well, my friends, I believe I'm finished with this top. I believe I am. I'll probably tweak it some here and there as we go, as time goes on. But, uh, 
I've tap tuned it or I've tapped it and I checked it and it came out to a perfect B flat which is pretty much where they all come out to whenever I get done carving them. I mean almost every one of them has been a B flat and uh, that's just fine with me. Got a very good sound. That long. Yeah, it's a real good sound. I'm real happy with it. It's got good vibration, real nice clear tone. It ought to be a heck of a mandolin. We'll wait and see.